The sales success of Ford's smallest pickup truck in America came as a surprise to absolutely nobody except for perhaps Ford. When the Maverick was first launched, I was excited, you were probably excited, and so were all of your neighbors, but Ford decided that maybe they didn't need to produce quite as many Mavericks as perhaps they were prepared to produce of other models, even though last year in 2022, it outsold the Ford Ranger by nearly 40%. Hopefully Ford is getting a handle on those production volumes because this Tremor trim right next to me adds an interesting new layer to the unobtainium that is already one of the best pickups available in America, the 2023 Maverick. Good luck getting your hands on a Tremor, let alone the base model, which would be the excellent hybrid system, the most fuel efficient truck in America, period. But in this video, I'm not here to talk about the model that I would buy if I were spending my money on a Maverick. I'm here to talk about the Maverick that seems targeted exactly at my demographic, which would be this new Tremor model. It has an extra inch of ground clearance, well, just under eight tenths of an inch. It has recovery hooks up front, definitely critical if you plan to go mild off-roading or if you just live off the beaten path and you worry about getting stuck here and there. And then of course it has an absolutely excellent all wheel drive system, which we're gonna talk about in a bit. We have the orange accents right here in the headlights, those orange tow hooks, and a slightly revised front bumper to help improve approach angles. Here's a closer look at the headlight. You can see that amber trim section inside, the LED accent light on top, and then the full LED reflector headlights down below. The turn signal remains an incandescent element. From this angle, you can see that the front overhang is a little longer than most trucks, mainly due to the transverse engine layout in the Maverick. We do have metal skid plates under here for the engine and transmission, but the lower bumper cover and the upper bumper cover are both plastic. So this angled section that you see right here, that's all plastic. We don't get underbody protection until the actual engine under there. I think that's a little bit of an interesting choice because I could see someone bumping in perhaps the intercooler, which is right here in this area, and all you have to protect that area is this plastic lower cladding. Whenever I talk to someone about the Maverick, the question of size always comes up. The Maverick is not as small as you might think. I think there were some misleading headlines when this model was first announced. Some people said it's the first truly compact pickup truck in our lifetime. Well, if you consider something the size of a Dodge Durango or a Ford Explorer compact, then hey, you do you, this is compact as well. Fact of the matter is this is nearly 200 inches long, and that's simply due to the reality of having a four-door truck with a usable cargo bed behind it. This is significantly longer than a 1970s Toyota pickup truck or a lot of 1980s pickup trucks that were relative sales success as well. And again, that simply has to do with the math. We have a bed back here where you could put eight foot items in. They're gonna hang out obviously, but you can put four by eight things here. And then we have the interior roominess of a subcompact crossover. So sort of Bronco sport like rear seat room, compact crossover like front leg room, decent headroom, and then of course the engine up front. And all of that takes some footprint. And that footprint is about the same as a Ford Explorer. The size of the Maverick is important. If you're thinking that this is gonna squeeze into a subcompact parking space in some places, you're going to be mighty surprised. This is shorter overall and a little bit narrower than the Ranger, but the difference is fairly small. For the confusion, I blame some of my compadres in the automotive industry that just spouted out PR statements without really digesting them first. And then of course, the rugged styling of the Maverick, which I think is excellently done. It's certainly a combination of Bronco Sport and a little bit of F-150 and some other Ford products jammed in there. It definitely does not look like the Ford Escape, on which arguably this is much more closely related. You see the Escape, the Bronco Sport, and the Maverick all use a lot of the same building blocks when it comes to the drivetrain, but they're in three very different sizes, and this is by far the biggest version of that trio. But let's get back to the Tremor, because more is happening back here than just this Tremor badge on the rear quarter panel. All of the changes that you'll see in the FX4 off-road package for the Maverick happen on the Tremor, and then a bunch of extra things as well. We get Tremor-specific wheels, and most importantly, those wheels are wrapped in Falcon Wild Peak all-terrain tires. These particular ones are a 235-65R17. A lot of folks don't realize exactly how much difference a tire makes when it comes to off-road capability, and of course, on-road capability as well. If you were to put summer tires on this exact same truck and try and take it on an off-road course, 
course, not only are you probably gonna damage your sidewalls more readily, but it's just not gonna have the right kind of grip on any sort of mud, sand, rocky situation, etc. You put all season tires on it, you're gonna improve that performance a little bit, but even relatively basic all-terrain tires like this are gonna have a reasonable improvement when it comes to traction. In addition to the extra off-road grip provided by the tires, we have a more advanced all-wheel drive system on board as well. Ford used one of their twin clutch rear differential units, which gives us torque vectoring capability, limited slip functionality, and effectively a rear locker as well. Then they've given us stronger half shafts because this vehicle is gonna be more willing to send power to the rear and then split that power more aggressively where it's needed on that locking rear differential. Of course, if you really wanted to take your Tremor off-road, you're probably going to want to delete these silly mud flaps that this particular trim has on it. The rear end styling is quintessential pickup truck. The light modules are on either side of the tailgate. The tailgate is steel and it's not damp, so it is a little bit heavier than you might think. Ford wisely puts the backup camera right there in the Ford logo that gives it a pretty decent view of the hitch. But there is something you should know about towing capacity. It goes from 4,000 pounds in most turbo models down to 2,000 pounds if you get the Tremor package because of the suspension changes that we have on this vehicle. I'm not the biggest fan of this offset rear license plate, but it's pretty logical because it's the only way for that to be visible when the tailgate is down on a truck that is this compact vertically. Obviously, if you put it in the middle, you wouldn't have the uh, hitch right there. We only have a four pin wiring harness. I do wish it had a seven pin. If you only have room for one harness, that's always the direction that I would go. The reason the tow rating is reduced is because the payload rating is also reduced. 1197 pounds is what this model maxes out at, and remember that includes the driver and any passengers you put in the vehicle in addition to the tongue weight for the trailer. The Tremor package not only tweaks the suspension and the tires and things like that, but it also adds some additional weight to the vehicle in the skid plates and other things. That's why we have the reduced capacity. No major changes happen under the hood for 2023, so shoppers are still pitted with a very difficult decision. The base engine is the hybrid system borrowed out of the Escape. It gives you excellent fuel economy, real world about 40 miles per gallon, but no way to get all wheel drive. If you want that, you have to get the two liter turbo, which is definitely fun, 250 horsepower, 277 pound feet of torque, and pretty darn quick because this weighs only 3,800 pounds. But fuel economy, that drops all the way down to 25 miles per gallon, and that's right in the same neighborhood as a decent number of full-size trucks in America. So do you want the fuel economy that is absolutely the best in a pickup truck, or do you want pretty average fuel economy in a pickup truck that's quite a bit smaller? A lot of you have had questions about the Maverick bed, so let's take a deeper dive in this video. This is nominally a four and a half foot bed versus the five and a half foot bed or six and a half foot bed that we are more used to in America. But if I measure from the back of the cab to back here by the tailgate, it is four feet five inches, not four feet six inches. And that's because the area right here behind the rear seats, it's not completely vertical. It actually kind of bows down because of course the rear seats have a slant to them and they use that space to maximize the cargo area down here by the floor in the cargo area. So if I were to, for instance, open the tailgate, it's currently stopping in that mid-level position, I could put an item that is exactly four and a half feet long from the bottom over here to the back of the tailgate area as long as it was 11 inches tall. So you could put a four and a half foot long, 11 inch tall thing completely in, and then of course, close the tailgate. But what if you wanted to carry something that's eight foot long? Well, we have a decent number of options because something four by eight will fit between the wheel wells and will stick out of the Maverick. How far will it stick out? Well, it will stick out to about there. That's about 18 inches from the edge of the tailgate. So that's absolutely not a stability problem at all. And you can use the tie downs that are integrated into the tailgate to hold those things down. So if you're worried about carrying sheets of plywood, art supplies, whatever it is that you might be carrying, you can do that in the Maverick actually relatively easily. And remember that even in most half ton trucks these days, an eight foot item is gonna hang out the back because eight foot beds are not very common at all in the half ton segment. The six and a half foot bed is by far the most common bed size. And if you have a six and a half foot bed on your half ton truck, you could put it in there and it would hang out this combo right here by only about four and a half inches. 
it's really quite practical. And I love, again, the way that Ford has done the various ways you can put this tailgate into action. I'm just gonna unhook this side right here so you can see what's going on a little bit uh, more easily. This is the cable that supports the tailgate. It is normally latched into place right there. That makes the tailgate level with the floor in the cargo area. But again, I can unlatch it, latch it onto that top post, that makes it level, this area right here, level with the top of the wheel wells. Then I can bend that around and that makes the tailgate level with the cargo dividers that you can put in there. If you like the size of the Maverick, but you find yourself regularly carrying larger items, you just put a two by four in this little trough right there across the back. And that allows you to put those larger items right there level with that tailgate in that position. I love the theory of a small, open, hose-outable, usable cargo area back here. In addition, of course, to putting luggage back here, which you could lock up with the appropriate cover. That is gonna be a bummer, of course, if you don't have a cover and you find yourself needing to put things back here that you'd rather have locked up. But for home improvement items, gym bags, climbing gear, whatever it is that you might wanna carry around that you don't wanna smell in the cab, or you just wanna be able to hose out, this is very practical. As you'd expect, the majority of the Tremors interior is shared with the rest of the Maverick lineup. We don't have a sunroof in this particular model. We have high adjustable shoulder belts for the driver and front passenger. If you want to know about seat comfort, rear seat fitment, child seats, things like that, check out the full video that I have on the channel. Basically, the rear seats give you about the same kind of room as the average subcompact crossover, although headroom is pretty generous in here. We have the Tremor logo embroidered right there on the seats orange stitching right there to help dress things up. And I really like what Ford has been doing with their low cost interiors lately, especially the color choices in here. Your eyes are not deceiving you. That is a charcoal pillar. We then have sort of a navy blue door. I don't know about you, but I really love some of these lighter or darker blue interiors that we're finding in a lot of vehicles. Kia has been doing this too. And I think Ford has been doing a really good job on materials selection and color selection. The plastics are hard on the front doors, just as you'd expect. Keep in mind, this pickup truck gets down to around $20,000 in its least expensive form, so plastics are definitely hard, although that does make them more durable. But lots of storage is going on here. We have storage areas down there, bottle holders, a practical door handle there. It doesn't have a wraparound so that we could put some larger things right there into the door. We have hard plastics on the dashboard as well. Again, that dark blue color scheme going on, ivory up there on the pillars, on the roof there, etc. We have some sort of rugged styled, I guess you could say, things. These are not actually holding anything together, but we do have those exposed screw heads, things like that, to dress things up a little bit. Kind of a geometric pattern to that mid-dash section right there. And then a surprisingly large bin-style glove compartment. I was easily able to fit an 11-inch tablet computer inside. What is on the small side, though, is the LCD right here in the middle of the dash. I think Ford could easily bump that up to, say, maybe a 10-inch LCD, but this one is, again, just fine for the price tag. Storage cubby right above that. More hard plastics there, as I said before. Physical buttons to control the infotainment system. That is kind of a nice touch. Moving down from there, large air vents. The controls for the dual zone automatic climate control. I would be willing to give up the dual zone system, maybe for a softer armrest. We have the engine start stop button there, place where you can stick your smartphone. This is not a wireless charger in this model, but you can also prop your smartphone up in that little slot. Kind of a nice touch there. Two large cup holders, the rotary style shifter that we've seen in a lot of other Fords. This is not my favorite because I do find myself going from reverse to drive quite frequently. And in this vehicle, it's much easier to go to park to drive. And I don't know who's going park to drive that often. Low is that button right there. No paddle shifters or anything like that, just drive and low electric parking brake, the trimmer drive mode button here. The drive modes have been tweaked versus the regular model. We have a four wheel drive lock button that commands more of a center coupling lock to send more power to the rear. Then we have a button to lock the rear differential, auto brake hold, hill descent control, traction control, etc. More storage areas going on right there. Padded center armrest, and then a fairly small storage area, but it is on the deep side. You could put a half gallon of milk inside. On the driver's side, we find a relatively large LCD for an inexpensive vehicle. This appears to be approximately seven inches nestled between a physical speedometer and physical tachometer. In addition to things like the infotainment readouts, we also get fuel economy screens, tire pressure screens, an all-wheel drive power distribution screen, and then of course the off-road angle indicators as well. Moving out to the steering wheel, it's a three-spoke design with a small split right down there on the bottom spoke. 
No paddle shifters on the back. I would love to see those, especially in the off-road or towing focused models. That would be a really great feature to have. Infotainment buttons are split between the two sides of the wheel. We find track forward, backward on the right, volume up, down on the left, along with the cruise control buttons over there, and then the buttons for that multifunction LCD cluster. The lane centering button, that's over here on the turn signal stock. Going back to the driver's side LCD for a moment, let's roll through the drive modes because these are a little bit different than the ones in the regular Maverick. Obviously we have a normal mode there, we have tow haul, we have slippery, which definitely changes the power balance and things like that for icy or snowy conditions. We then have mud ruts and sand. These replace the sport and the eco drive modes that you find in the regular Maverick. And they control, as you could see there just for a moment, not just things like the traction control and stability control system, but also the lockers in the vehicle. So I can gauge sand, it's automatically put on the center locker and the rear locker as well. When you get the Maverick out on a trail, the dimensions are very important to keep in mind because even though this is smaller than a Ford Ranger, it's not really going to turn a corner that much tighter, if at all. The turning circle diameter for this is about 40 feet. So pretty similar, honestly, to a, an Explorer or a Durango, something like that. And some of those rear wheel drive options will actually be a little tighter in terms of their turning diameter than this because their wheelbase is shorter. This wheelbase at over 121 inches is longer than the Ford Explorer's wheelbase. But on a trail like this, this definitely feels more compact than a half ton truck. Quite a bit more compact, to be honest. It's an awful lot easier to get through some of these dicier areas on this trail where we recently had a decent number of windstorms and of course over 60 inches of rain over the last month or so here so things are just really torn up on this trail and I think the tremor version of this is really well tuned for this situation. Now that said if you're a fan of Ford vehicles and Ford off-roading the Bronco Sport might be a little bit tidier in terms of dimensions. I'm gonna have to move a tree here because of some of the dimensions so let's just uh get this out of the way. Not a, not a very big tree, but still kind of a problem. Don't want to scratch the paint. So uh, let's get that out of the way and get going again. I do appreciate the extra ground clearance that we find in the Tremor. 9.6 is non-trivial. If you want more than this, you're going to have to get something like a Bronco or a Grand Cherokee with the air suspension. So this definitely has that ability to get over some of those larger snow drifts or larger obstacles or just some of the washboard stuff that you might find out on trails like this, rocks, etc. Definitely is going to make going a lot easier and a lot less worrisome than something that's lower to the ground. And because of the way this all-wheel drive system works, it feels very sure-footed out on surfaces like this. It feels an awful lot more like a Grand Cherokee or a Land Rover, to be honest, than a more traditional off-road vehicle like a Jeep Wrangler. And that's simply because this all-wheel drive system can electronically shuttle power around wherever it's needed. It can direct power to the rear axle, and then it can direct a ton of power to a single rear wheel thanks to that locker in the back. Again, it's not just a traditional locker, even though it can sort of imitate one, it has the limited slip functionality and the torque vectoring functionality that you might expect in a road going vehicle. That's because that differential was also used in the Ford Focus RS. So if you're not out on a trail like this and you were to swap grippier road tires onto your Maverick, it is gonna be a little bit more engaging than the average Maverick model. But let's roll through some of the performance figures first. 6.4 seconds is what I clocked zero to 60 in this model. And thanks to the relatively light curb weight, I was surprised by the 60 to zero stopping distance of just 122 feet. I had expected it to be a decent amount longer than that because generally vehicles with all-terrain tires, they don't stop terribly quickly. But I think that the tires Ford chose for this model were a good balance between on-road reality and off-road capability. This is not gonna get you over obstacles at Moab, anything like that, but it is gonna be a good blend of trail performance like this and on-road performance. There's another branch I'm gonna have to take care of. Hang on just one second. Another reason that the Maverick really seems to be targeted at my kind of living is I live just over that ridge right there. I'm basically right next door to home. Yes, I live just over that ridge right there, I'm basically. And over this last week, we've had 75 mile an hour winds. That was after having about 60 inches of rain over the previous few weeks. So this kind of vehicle definitely makes you feel a lot more comfortable living in this situation. Now, I haven't engaged any of the additional traction modes in this vehicle because I really love
Alrighty, with the cameras back of the truck, let's continue down the trail. Again, I've been in the normal mode this entire time because I like the very normative feel of the way that this directs power around the axles. But what I do find interesting is that if I engage the four wheel drive mode and the rear locker, this feels pretty similar to a Ford Bronco in that same situation. The thing that's interesting about the Maverick Tremor is that this all wheel drive system is certainly more aggressive at sending power to the rear axle and sending power really equally across that rear axle, effectively locking it up than something like a Honda Ridgeline. The Ridgeline, it will definitely send more power to the rear, but not as much as this. And you can really tell it if I put this really just at full lock, you can really feel that the drivetrain has a binding like feel to it and the turning diameter definitely is growing larger and larger because of the way this is really locking the clutch pack up. Now I suspect it's not as locked as a transfer case in a Bronco would be but this is closer to that than the average all-wheel drive vehicle. So if you are looking for that next level in performance you might want to take a look at this. Now what's also interesting about this is that I do have the ability to lock up the rear differential without also locking up the center coupling. And there are gonna be situations where you might want to do that. So I appreciate the fact that Ford gives us that flexibility and that ability to choose. And you'll also find that I lost the camera again. So hang on. Sorry, I might have run you over. My bad. Okay, and we're back again. Anyway, back on that handling balance, I'm gonna give this a B minus when it comes to road handling. You'll definitely notice a difference with the tires, etc. Now on this section of the trail, I am getting a little bit of slipping on the front axle. So I have the rear locker on. I will just turn the all wheel drive to the lock and it really goes away. In fact, this now feels very much like the average thing with a two speed transfer case, to be honest. Now it's not gonna have as low of a first gear ratio as you find in something like a Bronco or a Wrangler. So clearly that's going to mean that if you are in a really tough off-roading situation, this is not going to have the mechanical advantage of a vehicle with a two-speed transfer case, but it is going to feel really darn confident. And that is exactly what the Tremor is about. Now back onto the on-road driving. Interestingly, I measured the exact same 72 and a half decibels at 50 miles an hour when it came to cabin noise. So this is very, very much like the regular version. And when it comes to ride quality, I'm going to give this a B as well. Let's see exactly how this tackles this little hill here where I normally end up in vehicles uh, with uh, one wheel up in the air. This is definitely going to be putting one wheel up in the air. Yep, I can already feel it. Definitely slipping up front. It's sending power to the rear. Yep, yep. Oh, that was very drama free, to be honest. That felt an awful lot like a Grand Cherokee. Now, I'm going to definitely, oh, I'm teeter tottering now. I have uh, two wheels up in the air. Wow, it actually did that really, really well. Now I'm back here. Ooh, definitely boinging around with uh, one front wheel up off the ground. In fact, I'm actually going to just uh, go ahead and put this in park roll down the window and show you with this camera that you can see that that wheel is not really doing a great deal there uh, because of where we're teeter-tottering here. Um, you can really see, for instance, that very much up in the air right there. And if I put this back into drive, sorry, I unbuckled myself. I will rebuckle just so you can all stop worrying there on camera. Um, you can actually really see the way this is sending power around slipped backwards there a little bit but it's really gonna try let's just go we're gonna need to give it a little bit of gas here in this situation because i stopped i shouldn't have stopped i should have just had slow even progress forward but i wanted to show you there we go see we're actually out of that now that is not as graceful as anything with multiple lockers would be but it gives you the idea of what is possible in this little truck 
And this would not be possible in a wide variety of compact crossovers or subcompact crossovers, or I would argue even something like the current most capable version of the Honda Ridgeline. It just doesn't have that same sort of ability to send enough power to the rear. The software is not programmed like this, and a lot of it does have to do with software that this feels very sure-footed and very capable. And again, with everything locked the way that it is now, it really feels like this has true lockers. It doesn't really feel like what we find uh, in the Honda, unless I just put this in normal mode and then just drive along. Now, it does seem to be a little bit better if I repeat that same sort of process in the mud ruts mode. It seems to be a little bit nicer feeling. So some of the extra software definitely is kicking in on those situations. You'll notice that limiting power happens a little bit less in the mud ruts and in the sand mode, it's gonna allow you to have that, that greater throttle output so that we can really power out of some of those situations. But bottom line, this is just a fantastic package. My only complaint really is the fuel economy, which over a week of mixed driving where I haven't been doing off-roading until today, I've been averaging about 23 and a half miles per gallon. That's about what I expected out of this two liter turbo. The interesting thing is due to just the way pickup trucks are shaped and the fact that we have things like the skid plates and things like that on this vehicle, fuel economy is just going to be lower than you know the average compact crossover. If you were to get a Ford Escape, you're gonna get better fuel economy with its two liter turbo just because it's shaped differently. And the fuel economy in say a V6 version of the Silverado or some of Ford's own F-150s is not really going to be very far off of this. But that said, I love the combination of features and capability that we find in this. One last thing that makes me laugh a little bit is that Ford dials up the engine noise if I put this in the off-road modes, which kind of makes me chuckle a little bit. If I put this in the normal mode, it seems like the engine isn't as growly, but none of that growly is real. It's just coming through the speakers. If I put this back in that mud ruts mode, then it's gonna sound more manly, sound more off-roady, I don't know, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, I kind of like it, but it also is just a little on the fake side, so make of that what you will. I love the fact that when the going is easier, you can definitely power this around because there is definitely a lot of power going to that rear axle. Um, and then of course you have to like calm it down in some of these areas because there are holes in the road there that I have to patch with the tractor later. But this is just a ton of fun. I love the just the combination of on-road ability, the ease of driving, ease of operation. Um, it's just a really great package. I hope that Ford puts this system on more vehicles. This belongs on an off-road version of the Escape. Obviously, it's already on the Bronco Sport, etc. This is just a great, great package. More manufacturers need this kind of off-road addition to their lineup. And yes, we do see some of this in the Honda lineup, but not to this level. Bottom lining the 2023 Maverick is honestly pretty darn easy. This is quite simply one of the best new vehicles in America that you just can't buy today because Ford cannot build enough of them. Last year, Ford built about 75,000 Mavericks. This outsold the Ranger really, really easily. And I suspect if they could build a quarter million of them, they would sell every single last one of them. I know a number of people that have been on a wait list for a Maverick for over a year. And one of the reasons that we did not get a Maverick hybrid as a long-term tester here at Alex and Autos is because we quite simply could not get our hands on one. And that's why I'm a little bit surprised that we see the Tremor package in the 2023 Maverick, because there already are so many people wanting the regular versions of the Maverick, why add even more people that might want a future version of the Maverick to the pile? I don't understand that logic, but hopefully Ford is ramping production up for 2023. There have been a number of press statements and rumors to that effect, but we don't know exactly how many they will be able to build. It is just such a practical vehicle. You can get incredible fuel economy in the hybrid model, still reasonable towing capability. You get excellent performance, under six and a half seconds, zero to 60 in the turbocharged all wheel drive model. The Tremor model brings a level of off-road capability that the average American will never use, but could be really handy when the situation warrants it. And although the cabin is not as spacious as a Ford Escape, it's pretty darn close. So the average person out there buying a RAV4 or a CRV or an Escape could get something like a Maverick with the extra practicality of this pickup truck bed, and then of course the off-road capability of the Tremor, and 40 miles per gallon 
all everything together. Remember that a RAV4 hybrid is more expensive than a Maverick hybrid and still gets about 40 miles per gallon. A CRV hybrid is more expensive than this. It gets way less than 40 miles per gallon. And this still manages to beat something like the Sportage or the Tucson hybrid when it comes to the price tag and fuel economy both with the exception that there is no all-wheel drive on that hybrid model. That's really, for me, the only thing missing in the Maverick lineup. I suspect that if Ford can get production where they want it to be and maybe some sales actually start to slip off, then maybe we'll see a hybrid model of the Maverick coming soon. Uh, but up until we see that, this is probably the only way to get all-wheel drive, I would say. As always, be sure and hit that subscribe button down there. Sound off in the comment section, especially if you've had a pre-order in for a Maverick for any length of time. I would love to know how long you've been waiting for your Maverick. Hit that subscribe button. Find us over at EV Buyer's Guide, the Facebook page, the this, the that, all those other things, and I'll see all of you next week.